Guess where I am tonight? I'm in the organ grinder. Another quiet night. Matt, you're the uh, landlord of the organ grinder and you have quite a bit happening here don't you apart from people coming in to buy, buy drinks we have quite a lot of free events going on so we have anything to from open mic nights we have a three-day art exhibition we have uh, DJs every Saturday, live music every Friday. We also have a filmmaker society. We have markets on a Sunday. So they're all independent, some students, some not. People who just have things to sell, you know, who want to also start a bit of community, people popping in. We have lots of people that have had stores here before that are coming in to support others, to buy things, to see things that they've seen online, and basically just get involved. And it's a television free prop, isn't it? It is a television free prop, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'll say I'm it was. And uh, I know a lot of people are. So if we have nice to get into the club where you're not dominated by, uh, you know, plasma screens or whatever they are nowadays. Yeah, exactly that. Well, we have a function room upstairs, so I always try and keep it as you can come and join the pu uh, pub and get involved with the events, or you yeah. can come and join the pub and be completely separate. Yeah. So anything on BBC or ITV, like the World Cup or anything, will show upstairs in the room. Yeah. But it's usually quite a chilled, calm event kind of thing. Places in town that do more of a raucous kind of uh, event, and we just take the other side of that and do something a little yeah. bit calmer. But it's completely away from the bar, so you can also come in here and sit and have a pint while it's happening. Yeah, I love your sort of 70s night and your punk night yeah. with the stiff Stiff kittens. kittens, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I really enjoy that. We have quite a bit of a, uh, a community. Sonia, I think it is. Sonia yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah Sonia from yeah, Stiff yeah, Kittens, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have quite a big community of DJs here. Um, they've all often played with each other on different nights as well, or played with each other in different kind of venues all, all over the city. Uh, we also have Russell Fenby, we have DJ Dan Bolton, um, we have um, Sonia, as you've said, we have Sue, we have Daddy Bones. And all of them together often help each other out and come support each other's nights. And it's just a really, really nice to have just slightly different music every weekend, really. So if you want somewhere different on a Friday or a Saturday night, or even on a Sunday afternoon, yeah. and the organ grinder is the place to be. This is the place, absolutely. And the brewery that's behind it. Yeah, uh, the brewery, the Chinese Blue Monkey, yeah, Blue absolutely. Monkey, yeah, you find all Blue there. Monkey beers, cans, cask, keg, everything here. Maker as well, and yeah, so upcycled denim jackets, some of my t shirts that I get printed um, from Close to Order, an online one, if anybody's ever okay. wondering. Um, and then, yeah, so some of them I kind of like cut up and turn into dresses and add like corset sort of details to them because I haven't yet made a corset to sell, I've only made corsets for myself, but okay, at some point. <laughs> and you work at the pub, don't you? Yes, one day a week at the moment doing all about the posters and not all of them but quite a lot of the posters um, and I'll soon be kind of moving on to doing some like the art exhibitions and wanting to kind of 
do some like workshops as well. And the big presumptuous here, you, were you a art student? Yeah, so I okay. went to um, Trent University doing um, fine art. Okay. And then, yeah, I just wanted to actually, because I used to work at Hopkinson's doing a lot of like the graphics and art there. Oh, on the station. And I, um, oh, the, oh, the railway station. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I kind of just like wanted like a job within the art. So then I kind of set up this, but then looking at going into different markets, it's very expensive. So that's why I wanted to set up one in the pub. Um, and then it's like a pay what you can, yeah. pay what you feel sort of thing. So if you're unable, then yeah. you can have the space for free, but it kind of goes towards my, um, so much organizing. <laughs> Um, You've got a variety of uh, things here. Yeah, I try to get um, a few new faces each each month, um, but then we have some familiar faces keep coming back. Um, so how long has it been going then? This, so uh, this will uh, be what's the name of it here at um, the Organ so Grinders in Nottingham? Just Dead Squish Market, Okay. Um, which is my business name. Um, yes, this will be the fourth month that we've done it, so only going for like four months, but my I've been doing art since I was a little kid and then God knows how long ago I started actually selling but And at the moment it's usually on the third Yeah, third Sunday, Sunday of the month Upstairs um, Upstairs, yeah Organ grinder in uh, Canning Circus Can you talk me through what we've got uh, here? Yeah, so um, when I was actually at university I uh, made my own films like I made my own sculptures and sculptured costumes and then made made films, edited the films, made my own music for the films and basically did it as like big installations. So that's how you got like some of these like photo collages of some of my other costumes and some like microscopic backgrounds because I'm really like interested in like death decay and worms in particular. And um, then like when I was like oh I kind of want to try and sell some of my stuff um, I kind of went into some um, digital illustration because that's what I had to do at my um, at my old job, and I kind of like realised like, oh, I quite like it. I can like kind of do it and be productive. And then on the side, I'm making like my films and like sculptures and stuff still. Um, so it's a bit better at the moment with like some of the earrings, but like I kind of like to make some of my own earrings to kind of get a little bit of sculptural stuff into my work. And I would say I'm a lot very prefer the practical side of things instead of so I like to do anything like make earrings getting really into like lino printing at the moment and um, do a lot of um, sewing so I go to like the textile workshop in Sherwood and um, is that near the old bus station is that the one on it's um the weather spoons it used right? to be there okay. it's now um, where we're based is um Hartley um, storage centre, so okay. we've got like two big. Um, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah two yeah. bigger uh, um, sewing rooms in there. Yeah. So yeah, um, getting back into like because I'm a self-taught sewer, but now like I can kind of yeah learn properly and start making my own clothes and stuff. So Thorn, what's your uh, website? Um, desquish.co.uk and that's the same for my Instagram and stuff as well at desquish. Fantastic. Thank you. Great. Maz, Snowflake Magazine. Yes. What's that, what's that all about? Uh, so what we tend to do is um, we have a lot of very small creators here, um, all LGBTQIA+, um, who are trying to get a little bit of a leg up in, in the industry, trying to make their art, trying to get their poetry and their name sort of a bit more recognised. Um, so essentially we give them a platform to do that um, and each we do it for every year so it's a quarterly magazine and we tend to have a theme for each one and people can just kind of go to our website have a look at our prompts have a conversation with us about like what they want to do and then they send it send it in is, we, that, a, is that a subscription then um, to get the magazine or uh, we are setting up a subscription currently but currently uh, we just sort of you can just buy them um, okay. individually but uh, yeah, so people just send in amazing amounts of 
creative content. Uh, and me and my team all put them all together, um, have a look through, choose our favorites, and, and yeah, publish them so in these magazines. The magazine? Is there advertising? Uh, so that? there isn't any advertising. We currently just run based off the sales of the magazines. Okay. Um, and we, at the minute, mostly non-profit because we just put all of the funds from the magazine into reprinting. So it's very, very much a break even. Yes, doing but exactly. Sort of yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. The eventual goal is to be paying um, sort of ourselves and the team, but also be paying everybody that appears in the magazine. We're hoping to to kind of uh, take these sort of hobbyist artists, these hobbyist poets, these people who don't really make any money from it, and yeah. give them. A, a platform and an ability to, to suddenly make money from it and, yeah. and sort of you know really get out there and, and make a name for themselves. It's nice to see something tangible. Yeah, that's, isn't that's it? the thing. I mean, yeah. I ran a magazine, no, oh, probably 15, 16 years ago. Oh, yeah. And to get that initial traction, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, eventually I've got the NHS, BT, you know, a lot of big companies advertising oh, with wow. me. Then I sold that on for the database. Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, to get that going, it's, it yeah, costs I mean, a lot of money. We, a I lot got of very time. lucky in the fact that I have a, an absolutely phenomenal team. Um, yeah. Some of the people uh, on my team, Matt and Teo, they've been taking over the Instagram and doing really good on there. Yeah. Uh, we had Im, uh, who was just here briefly, uh, was amazing, sort of getting us known on Twitter a little bit. And all of us just kind of pitch in, do what we can. We're all volunteers, all doing. You, just, man, you yeah. mentioned Instagram. What do you think is the best or the uh, most positive social media platform that uh, mm. you've had to sort of? the best think, feedback on? I think or, it depends what kind of If you could only pick one of them. Oh, if I had to pick one. one. Oof, there you um, go. Instagram probably, purely okay. just because uh, the art and the, the sort of platform of Instagram just kind of allow, allows and helps artists to get yeah. more recognised. So you get more sure. sort of artistic people yeah, there's on a lot Instagram, more sort of visual. Say. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a lot more of a visual social media, for sure. Okay. Um, but um, on Twitter, we sort of mainly get a lot of writers on Twitter. It tends to be a little okay. bit better for for, twi uh, for writers to get out there on Twitter. Yeah, it tends to be more popular for and those. Your latest latest issue. What's the? Uh, oh yeah. So um, on our website, snowflakeculture.com. Um, That's we, on the screen right now. <laughs> it's on the screen right now. Um, we are currently advertising for the labels issue, which is all about identity, all about facets of identity, what makes us us, as well as. Um, kind of these strange, interesting little things that we grab and, and make part of our mm. personalities that sort of we, we you know, um, find out in the wild and just kind of go, yeah, I like that and I want that to be, become part of my identity. So all of the prompts on the website all, all do talk about these various different things that sort of make us, so, that form our identities. Maz, have you got an artistic background then? Uh, I do, actually, yeah. Um, so I did um, English combined at university, so I sort of have quite an English background, but um, even then, I sort of took over a magazine at, at university, and then fresh out of university, I took over another magazine, and then this is the first one where I started completely from scratch, and it kind of combines a lot of my passions, like art and, and writing, but also, you know, just sort of being queer and, and uh, sort of LGBTQA. Finally, how long has it been going? Uh, God, um, it's about a year and a half. Okay. Now we're on, so we do four every year. We're currently in production on our third one for the second year, so just over a year and a half. It's It's been a wild journey, um, and I get to meet a lot of really cool people, um, like yourself, and just <laughs> kind of just have a lot of fun with it, really, yeah. The, the sort of the, the, the talented people in our community is insane. It's I can really hear some of the people that know me laughing at that comment. <laughs> <laughs> so you're basically nothing in there? Uh, so me and, and my partner are, yeah, um, but our team is actually based all around uh, all around the UK and the okay. submitters, the people that kind of send us work in and the people that we sort of send magazines out to, that's all international. We actually get some people, um, they send in work from the States, from the US, uh, we've had a couple of people send in stuff from India, okay. uh, a couple of people from Australia, like um, I believe, um, yeah, we have one from South Korea. It's like, it's do, do you, is that a reciprocal thing with uh, maybe similar things in, in the US, you've mentioned America? Um, I'm not sure what you mean, sorry. On the similar things over there where you sort of... Oh yes, um, there's yeah. a lot of uh, sort of queer community and a lot of like creative literary community over in the States. Um, a lot of the people that send in stuff are obviously from uh, like kind of West Coast or East Coast, the sort of extremes of New York right. and, and, and LA and stuff. Um, but we, yeah, there's, 
there's a lot of publications over there, but I think people just really vibe and, and resonate with what we're doing. Yeah. And so, yeah, all over the world, there's just people who have kind of stumbled on us and just sort of gone, yes, let's send stuff in. Okay. Um, yeah, it's quite exciting, it's quite cool. Brilliant. <laughs> Sebastian, tie dyeing, I presume? Yes. What's it all about? Um, so I've been running for about a month. <laughs> and I did it as a hobby and I really liked taking the colours of various pride flags so you've got your trans flag here, you've got some ace t-shirts here today and I just thought there might be a few people out there in the sort of LGBT community who might want to wear their pride on a t-shirt so I've just started doing these as a hobby in my back garden set up an Instagram, set up an Etsy and see if people like them had a, a few people interested, uh, sold a t-shirt at a pride market yesterday. Okay. It, it's very early, this is very much testing the waters, but it's also just a lot of fun. You know, I mean, the good thing with online shopping now is that uh, you haven't got any sort of expenditure of premises and that sort of thing, No, I couldn't do that. This so. is very much just a passion <coughs> project. Brilliant. Chloe, lino print. What's that all about? Well, what is a lino print? What's a lino print? Well, you kind of gouge out pieces of plastic and then you ink them up and you print them. It's very easy. Okay. It's, it's quite a like easy, quite accessible way to to print stuff. So you don't need print and press really. Is that where you actually put the ink? You roll the ink on the actual lino and then put the paper on top and roll it. Am yeah. I getting that right? Okay. Yeah, that's how you do it. Okay. So it's nice and simple and um, just like a few designs that I've done over the years sometimes I do designs for like yeah. um, events like posters yeah. and stuff like that uh, the patches I just kind of like you know upcycle my clothes with them yeah. and like cover like actual holes and stains and stuff so it just started as something I liked it started giving my friends and stuff and, and have you got a background in uh, yeah I, st I studied fine art okay. um, I did more kind of not in trend. Yeah, 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 it yeah. is. Um, did more like, kind of like performancey stuff, but I also really like painting and, and okay. more like traditional media as well. Right. So. I can't paint to save my life. <laughs> I can it's put a doodles on, on the wall with the help of the roller, but that's about it. Just as fun. <laughs> <laughs> could, could somebody do it at home? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you go to a craft store, you buy um, some kind of tools and okay. a piece of lino and you just go well with it and you know you need a bit of ink um, and some paper and that's it. Can you use any ink or is it? Uh, I usually use like oil based ink because okay. it just like gives a bit of a nicer look. Um, I really like red and black ink as you can tell. And do you, did you do your t-shirt on using lino? No, um, I did that. Um, I cut out the design from like a piece of like high quality card and then um, just painted over it, like really DIY. Oh, right, okay. Didn't want to pay for like a screen print in no, 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 thing. No. So, so is that done in reverse then? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you kind of had to work out the design in reverse and cut it out with a scalpel. Oh, uh, right, okay. Yeah. Okay, a yeah. scalpel. Yes. Keep keeps away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Always have one on me. <laughs> so I'm part of like a creative duo okay. called State Funded Lesbian Disco Activities. Yes. And um, we want to bring more lesbian events to these buildings. Okay. Um, so that's also something that I do and I like design this t-shirt and all that. Okay. And, stuff. and do you sell these online or, or well, have you just, got an online presence? We've only just started. Okay. Um, we do have an Instagram okay. called State Funded Lesbian Disco. Okay. Um, and we just want everyone who kind of like feels like they're part of that community, feels like um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean just women, you know, non-binary people and stuff, but we just want to have a good time. And what's your, your website or um, Instagram for your own My Instagram is work? c dot willis okay. underscore underscore. Okay, so Ethan, do you, uh, have you been here very often to this fair? Um, I, uh, this is one of my first markets I've done, but uh, my boyfriend who created all this stuff, he right. goes to quite often. So do you do this sort of full time then? Or is uh, that like me? A hobby? No, no, no. Like I say, I just finished um, 
a graphic design degree. Oh right, what was that, a trend? Oh uh, yeah, it was a trend, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and what were, you, what were you hoping to do with that? Um, I'm not sure really, that's kind of my next move is figuring out where I'm going from here. Right. Um, I've just been doing a the sideline. Um, I want to keep making stuff like this for sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, going into design. Oh, well, what's that? Is that, uh, is that based on anybody then? Um, or is it just yeah, imagination? I think, I think it's an original character, yeah. I think there's inspiration from a few places, but I'm pretty sure this is an original character. Okay. Um, well, they're budgets. Yeah, yeah. little budgets. Little kind of budgets. Um, well, uh, they're little cat hats. So oh, when you right, put them okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the shape of it. Yeah. They're, they're really good. Jewelry. Um, Toby can crank out those hats. Probably worn them about uh, an hour or two. Probably about two hours, I think, for a hat. So, Ethan, do you have an online presence? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a, an Instagram under the name uh, Skylar, Mer Skylar Romero Mantles, okay. um, and uh, my boyfriend has all his socials uh, down there. He's got a store on Instagram and Etsy called Serial Assessment.